We are underway at Preston City Oval for the second quarter of action. The MC Labor Division 2 Grand Final. It's going to be Stefano and Barrow. Again, the two big men going at it. And Stefano again wins the tap. Helping him out on that occasion was Kane Hall to push it forward. Off the ground go the Creekers. Tobin was in front and then slammed to the ground by James Houston. Tobin, of course, two premierships with West Preston Lakeside on this very ground back in 2018 and 2019. This is his fourth grand final in six years. He's second with Diamond Creek, of course. Ball gets tossed up as the lines through Fahler kick this one off the ground towards the boundary line. Marshall opts to slide in. Can't get that ball away. Eventually, Jolly gets the clearing kick. Searles in front. Couldn't control it. Barnes front and center. Applying a lot of pressure is Kobe Van Zwienen. Maloney, he's going to work his way out of this. And then he's quickly met by James Houston. And we'll have a stoppage almost right in front of our commentary position. In these cold and winterly conditions. But on the right, you will be able to see soon some nice sky as well. No rucketing a hit out there. Tobin got it over to Barnes. Left foot balls, a bouncing one towards half forward. Trying to control it is Major. Didn't get to Pingree either. Sidhu's coming hard, so is Major. Sidhu lost his footing, but tapped it to the advantage of Kane Hall, and that kick out worked okay. And then Stefano just gets boots the ball and sends it very, very high inside 50. Tough one to get to for Lansfield. Davies at the back of the pack. It's Maloney who punches it away only momentarily. Stefano, always a tough task for him to pick it up off the ground. Couldn't do so. There's Jolly as well. And then Houston is wrapped up by a couple of Creekers. We'll have a ball up just outside 50 for the Lions. So South Morang once again looking to get a score on the board early in the second quarter. Stefan Alamos goes with the backhand hit out there. And it comes down in the Houston direction. It's paddled even further forward for South Morang. And there's a free kick which has been paid for contact below the knees it looks like. And it will be Kane Hall with it. Directly in front, man on the mark, standing about 45 metres out from goal. Kicking into the wind, it's going to take his absolute best. And there's a big pack of players forming on the hot spot there. He's going to hand it off to Ty Hall. A short chipping kick towards Jolly. Can't quite hit the target. Comes to ground and Diamond Creek defenders do well. Comes out through Randall. Eventually to Lewis. And now a long kick out of defence. Over the pack and... Carl Packers is going to lead the race. No major actually beats him to it and paddles it forward for Diamond Creek. He keeps going, goes to ground, takes possession and wrapped up immediately by Deacon Carl Packers. Well, South Morang have got to be disappointed there. Ty Hall had that option in Liam Jolly and Liam Jolly was in front of his opponent. So had the kick gone on target, it would have been a mark. But instead, the ball is outside Diamond Creek's forward 50 arc. As Barnes runs inside forward 50, tries to get a handball over the top. Pingree's in there, comes out to Deacon Kalpakis. He gets it over to Ty Hall, who just goes on the left, but it's a scrubber kick. Trainu tries to make it work. Eventually, Kane Hall gets it out of there, but intercepted by Barrow. Barrow's going to quickly send this one forward half, gets it to Tobin, who's still 60 metres from home. Chips it now inside 50, and Pingree He's able to take a nice mark on the lead. And Ryan Pingree will look to go back now. And kick his 205th senior goal. Of course, fantastic goal kicker again this year. 26 majors in 15 games. He's kicked four goals versus South Morang this year in games. And you'd think the distance wouldn't be much of a problem as he'll kick from just inside 50 with some wind assistance. It will all be about accuracy. This to get to margin within a point. He's worked that beautifully as Ryan Pingree. And the Creekers get the opener of the second term. And reduce the deficit to just one point. Two straight 12, Diamond Creek. South Morang 2-1-13. Four minutes gone. Opening uh, second term. And, well, Tim, when you can get leads like that in these conditions, they're worth their weight in gold. They certainly are. Especially when Diamond Creek have found it hard to find a target inside forward 50 to start this game. But Ryan Pingree there just taking his moment. And a really assured set shot. Umpire barely had to move on the goal line. And bringing the margin back within one point. Really impressive stuff there from the Creekers. As the sun comes back out and bathes <laughs> Preston City over, we're back in the middle now. Barrow jumps over the top, but Stefano just brings that ball to ground and gets a first kick forward for South Morang. Searle has it. Taken high, but nothing doing up. Oh. Bale Marshall has it. He's taken to ground and caught holding the ball by Bailey Brown. And he's going to give away a 50-meter penalty to go with it. So just after Diamond Creek had cut the margin to a point, 
Bailey Brown catches Dale Marshall in a huge tackle and just an unnecessary 50 metre penalty to give away. Bailey Brown will be marched inside forward 50 and get the quick response for South Morang. He's on a slight angle, no man on the mark. But he will be kicking from about 20 metres out from goal. Sends it on its way and South Morang had the immediate response. Margin back out to seven points. The Lions 3-1-19 leading Diamond Creek two straight 12. It's really costly free kick to give away there. Just unnecessary from Dale Marshall after being caught holding the ball and then that was forgivable but it's not forgivable to give away that 50 and a near certain goal to Bailey Brown who I think has had a really impressive start to this match in the centre. Um, he's been the one who's done the job thus far on Jacob Booth. We thought it could be Ty Hall and Jacob Booth matching up together but at the moment it's Bailey Brown up against him in the middle and he's done a pretty commendable job. Second in the Division 3 coaches MVP in 2022. In a year, of course, that his side went on to win the flag. He's having a good start to this game. It's Barrow here that does get the tap. In a very sunny-looking Preston City Oval, Leonardis tries to barge his way through. He's unsuccessful. So we'll get a ball up. Still in the centre square. Lions lead by seven points. Tap from Barrow this time. Ricocheted off a couple. Barnes tried to get boot to ball. Couldn't do so. Leonardis does, but it's a very high ball. Won't be 15. Barrow tries to punch it forward. Landed straight for Failer. Didn't absorb the tackle. Tried to take it on, but then could not get boot to ball. So, Camburis of Diamond Creek just going to chip this one short to Mitch Dale. Wanted to take it on, but goes back on his line now, does Mitch Dale. True center wing broadcast side. Left foot ball. He's going to try and switch his footy. It's going to bounce just in front of a teammate, but the handball works okay. Now Searle is 60 metres out to a pocket of space. It's going to bounce through for a behind. Not really one to get on the goal kicks list, but did kick one in Diamond Creek's big win over Whittlesey last week in the prelim. But he cuts the margin to six points. Yeah, got a bit goal happy after kicking that goal <laughs> last week, but Nathan Searle has Diamond Creek's first blemish of the afternoon. There's a oh. free kick paid inside forward 50. And I think it was just an overzealous Shepherd from Musket. And it looks like it will be Jet McLaughlin lining up. So just another unnecessary one. It's gone both ways in this second quarter. As you see, the replay here. See if we can pick it up. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, just unnecessary with that Shepherd. And McLaughlin will line up for Diamond Creek's third goal of this grand final and to level the scores here at Preston City Oval. Sends it on its way, starts left, but sneaks its way through. And we have a tie ball game here at Preston City Oval. Jet McLaughlin, the 18-year-old, kicks his first of the grand final. Diamond Creek's third, and it is 3-1-19 apiece. Eight minutes played second quarter. And Jet McLaughlin... Looking really adept at senior level. Of course, has the nine games with the Northern Knights this year, but the 18-year-old just willing to put his body on the line time and time again and got the free kick there and puts his team back level with a really important goal. Of course, with the favourable conditions and the wind at the moment, Diamond Creek know just how important every goal is in this second term. So let's see what they can do with it in this quarter. Stefano gets the tap. Hall tries to kick it off the ground, but it'll be Barnes that gets the clearing kick. Spiraling ball towards half forward. Diving well is Pingree. And he's just put the hand up straight away and said, yep, I'm going to go back and have a look. He's already got one this afternoon. Ryan Pingree, such an experienced forward of this Diamond Creek side. Looking for his 28th goal of the season. He's going to chip it inside 50, but not a great kick. And in the hole was the South Moraine captain, Ty Hall. Was able to read that kick in beautifully and Pingree was just trying to get a bit closer to goal with a teammate but was unsuccessful and now South Moran will look to rebound. It's going to be Lockie Potter who swings around on the right boot and sends it down the line. Again, off a few hands. Diamond Creek with the numbers as they try to push it forward. They do get boot to ball. It gets a fair way towards Jarvis. Unable to take the mark. Works out here for Alwood, picks it up quickly and then shoots towards goal, but it's wide and it won't register a score. And we're going to have a boundary throw in. Deep inside 50 for Diamond Creek, which won't be too bad of an option, you would think, for the Creekers as they look to 
get in front for the first time this afternoon, which they yet to do. So boundary throwing in coming deep inside 50 for Diamond Creek. Scores level at the 10 minute mark of the second term of this MC Labor Division 2 Grand Final. Stefan Olin Major. Stefan Ol able to push away and get the tap. Still a chance though. Lions have to track back. A Deacon Kalpakis will concede. And it is indeed Diamond Creek's first lead of the afternoon. They are 3 2 20. South Moranga 3 1 19. And the Lions look towards the outer side. Yeah, Kalpakis moves it on quickly. And the Lions have it in the defensive pocket on that outer side. It's going to go with a long kick. Jolly flies at the back, brings it to ground. Now it's going to go forward through Leonardis for the Lions. Towards forward 50, a big mark over the top, almost taken by the defender. And holding the man, free kick almost paid. Nothing doing, says the umpire. Handball comes out for the Creekers, and they will relieve out of defence. The kick intercepted by Potter, but he can't get clean possession of it. Now it's going to come out to Diamond Creek. A long ball inside oh. forward 50 for the Creekers. It's going to beat all comers. Van Zwienen's back there. He's going to rush it Ooh. through for South Morang. Teague Van Zwienen there. Ooh. And another minor score for Diamond Creek. They move to 3-3-21. Leading South Morang 3-1-19. I think there's been a 50-meter penalty paid on the kick-in. Yep, encroaching the mark from the Creekers defender. So Mitch Kalpakis... Back could be Deacon Kalpakis, who's got it. Yes, at centre-half back. He'll look to go to Potter, who's at half-back. And now he's got plenty of room in front of him, does Potter. Runs his full measure. Sends it towards half-forward. Jolly's going to have to fly from the side. They bring it to ground. Leonardis found space when there wasn't any. Sends it inside 50. Dinted Osante. <laughs> Holding, mark, whatever you like. Beautiful forward craft. And a great kick as well from Leonardis inside 50. And he's found the Coburg VFL listed star forward. He's already got one this afternoon. He's looking for a second. And he could do so against the run of play. His side trail by just two points. They've only had the lead lost momentarily. And he'll be kicking against the win, but probably from about 40 metres out on goal. Dintino Sante starts his approach. End up being about a 35-metre kick. Slight angle to speak of, and he sneaks it home. Diamond Creek wanted it a behind, but it's Dintin Osante who's got two. And just like that, South Moranga back in front, 4-1-25. Diamond Creek, 3-3-21, 12 three-quarter minutes gone, second two. And he's so hard to beat in a one-on-one -on -one contest. And that's why South Morang want to find him one out as much as possible because he just wrestled with his defender there and just had the footy smarts to get in front of his opponent. You can see it there on the live stream. A great mark and then to go back and take such an important set shot for the Lions. That's why he's such a lethal threat in this team. So ball back in the middle of Preston City Oval here. Stefan just shoves Barrow out the way and gets the tap down. Coming through He's a Diamond Creek defender, but it's going to come forward through Van Zween and for South Morang. Oh, tries to get a handball, just took on one too many tacklers. And the free kick has been paid for holding the ball, and it will be Dale with it, defensive side of the centre square for Diamond Creek. He's looking to move the ball to the outer side and eventually does go that way. And now back in the middle of the ground, finds Marshall. He looks to move it on and send it inside forward 50. Players fly for the mark, but it comes down to Stefanal, who just hands to Kalpakis. And a quick kick out of defensive 50 for South Morangas. Yep. Bounced right over the fence. So, and I think it has been it's an insufficient intent paid against Kalpakis. So it will be a Diamond Creek free kick paid in front of the Kramer's Hotel sign here at Preston City Oval as we just wait for either that ball to be returned or a new one to come onto the ground. <laughs> so 14 yep, minutes new, gone new in this second gone. quarter. We have a new ball coming onto Preston City Oval. It is South Morang 4-1-25, leading Diamond Creek 3-3-21. Diamond Creek took the lead for a few moments there, but a second goal to Josh Dintinasante has put South Morang back in front. Now it will be Diamond Creek going forward once again, looking for their fourth of the afternoon. Long kick towards forward 50. It's cut off by Hall. Eventually coming through is McLaughlin. 
Gets a quick kick forward. Can't quite find a target. Deacon Kalpakis is there. Goes in low. And I think there was a shove or is a ball just find its way over the boundary line. It has. So umpire will throw it in deep inside. Forward 50 for Diamond Creek as they look to reclaim the lead here. Boundary throwing in coming. Stefan Ohl and Baird to doing the ruck work here. Ricochets off a couple and then that ball not going anywhere. Good to see Kane Hall okay. Looked a little bit sore in one of the previous contests earlier in the quarter, but he's okay. Stefan Ohl just thumps that one out into space and then eventually seeing that one over the boundary line is Matthew Brennan. 21 years of age. Got to say, Nathan Stefano definitely having the ascendancy in this ruck contest against Nicholas Barrow thus far. Oh, he's up against Tom Baird here again by the looks of it. So, ball gets tossed back into play. It is Stefano that got a hand onto it. Trying to get the clearance was Booth, but it was smothered. Instead, he would just lay the tackle. So, another stoppage. We're about 60 metres out from the Diamond Creek goals. They trail by just four points. In this second term, Mitch Dale applying the tackle, and the umpire said it was too dangerous of a tackle. So it's going to go back in the direction of the lines, and it'll be Kane Hall, who has it at half back. 16 and a half minutes gone, second term. Kane Hall just sends this one down the line. It's going to fall short. It'll be marked now by Randall. Randall's got it on center wing, out of side, has options inboard. He's just going to go long and direct. Sends it inside 50. Over the head of Pingree. Two on one. Almost getting there was Baird. Front and centre was McLaughlin. Couldn't keep his feet, but did handball it out into space. Leonardis over around the footy. Still a chance for the Creekers if they could pick it up cleanly. Baird again. Found McLaughlin. Got the handball away as well. They're finding each other. McLaughlin eventually gets a snap towards goal. And it's going to bounce through for a minor score. So the margin reduces now to three points. Diamond Creek at 3 4 22, trailing Seth Morang 4 1 25. 17 and a quarter minutes gone. Second term of the MC Labor Division 2 grand final. Kalpakis has it on the last line of defence for South Morang. He had some options on this near side, but he's going to go to the outer side of Preston City Oval once again. Big pack of players form, and Kane Hall takes a strong mark. So the Lions looking to move it forward. Van Zwienen. The Kobe variety takes the mark on the corner of the centre square. She's going to go with another short chip kick, but had three Diamond Creek defenders to contend with there, and the quick kick forward lands in the hands of Booth, who will send the Creekers back inside at forward 50. McLaughlin's on his own, can't quite hold the mark, and he's going to have to get through the pressure of Liam Fahler, gets a handball out. Now it's wrapped up by Leonardis. And MP in there for Diamond Creek. We'll have another stoppage inside the centre square. Stefan and Barrow both get hands to that one. Hall lays the tackle. Kane Hall now gets the handball out to Leonardis. Tries to spin out of one tackle from McLaughlin and forced into an incorrect disposal. So the 18-year-old having a big impact mm. in this second quarter is Jet McLaughlin. And he'll send Diamond Creek inside forward 50 once again. He's got a couple of leads, but Kalpakis flying across. Tries to spoil it. Got to play it. Inside forward 50, though, in the forward pocket for Diamond Creek and just can't get clean hands to it. And it will trickle over the boundary line for another throw in. 18 and a half minutes gone, second quarter. The three-point lead in favour of South Morang. So the Creek is still with a chance here to get their lead back. Very shallow throw in. In fact, it might be, be asked to take it again. It is. So wind, of course, affecting these throw-ins as well, as you would expect. But we'll try again. We're still deep inside 50. That's a deeper one. Tap coming from Major this time. Pingree just got the handball out to space. It's a dangerous chance. Mishkal Pakas lost the footy. Still has to rush it over. Now he does. And we have a two-point ball game now. Diamond Creek at 3-5-23. Seth Maranga 4-1-25. We are about to tick into time on in this second term. And the Lions will escape defensive 50. They'll look towards Lansfield. But it's cut off here by Robbie Noble. Who's off his line. Left football towards the pocket. It's a good one. And a great mark taken inside 50. By the Diamond Creek man in Tom Baird. It'll be a tough angle. He's going to kick from probably the paint of 50. He will have the wind in his back. As we said. 
Seven now, eight goals in the final series this year for Tom Baird, despite this just being his sixth senior game of the season. So Baird will start his approach. So this is to put Diamond Creek back in front as time on comes on. Baird comes in. It's going to go across the face. Might stay in play. There's a bit of a leap, but the Lions again will concede, and the margin is just one point. Going to go to the near side with this kick in. Is Kalpakis jolly? Makes a contest with Baird, but oof, they just watch the ball go over the boundary line once again and another throw in here with a point the margin. And the Lions uh, looking to go really quickly from that defensive kick in, but the last couple of times Diamond Creek have just been alert to it and it's been able to intercept or just stop their run and transition. So Stefano just nudges his opponent under the rock and has given away a free kick for doing so. Just had two hands in the back of Robbie Noble there. So Noble has it. Doesn't look confident. He's just going to go with a short chipping one to a contest. It was a one-on-one. -on -one and it's cleared by South Morang. Finds its way out to Phalo. Gets it to Culpakis. It's going to go kick to the out onto the middle of the ground. But Randall's the only one there. And he takes a relieving mark for Diamond Creek. And will send them inside forward. 50 goes around one would-be tackler. Inside forward 50, Lock and Potter gets first hands to it. Finds its way back to Kalpakis. Gets a kick over to Trainu, who's set upon by Searle. Gets the handball back from Baird. Snaps one towards goal. Kalpakis takes the mark sliding, got pushed to ground. And eventually will find its way across goal for Diamond Creek and out of bounds. So ball to be thrown back into play. It was McLaughlin there with that shot on goal. I'm not sure if he was intending it for it to be a goal or more just to try and find someone in the corridor, but... Failed at both, and we're going to have a boundary throw in inside 50. It's been inside the Diamond Creek forward half for a good five to ten minutes now. They still find themselves behind. Stefano, no problems with that throw in, and it's going to be taken again. So, very shallow. I reckon the Rucks are just going to have to adjust here and try and move a little bit closer because they are going to be shallow when they are tossed in from that side of the ground. But we are still deep inside 50 here for the Creekers. Stefano with a tap. Went past the hands of Mitch Kalpakis. And eventually cleared away by Ty Hall. It's a bouncing ball towards the boundary line. And umpire is happy to let that one go over. We'll have a boundary throw in. 22 and a half minutes gone. In this second term, it's a one-point difference. It is in favour of South Morang. If you just joined us, it was Diamond Creek that won the toss, but opted to kick to the city end, which was against the wind. They do have the win now, but they still trail. It was Potter coming through hard. That was McLaughlin. He's set upon by a few lines. Just had to get the handball away. Didn't find a teammate. And then Diamond Creek returned the favour. Holding the ball. Great pressure coming from Diamond Creek. Although Jacob Booth is in a world of pain. Still on his haunches. And it's McLaughlin again setting the tone, Tim. Yeah, huge tackle there. Just... Brilliant on Kobe Van Zwienen. Oh, sorry, but Jet McLaughlin there. Just brilliant effort tackling. And he's been the one in this second term who's really set the tone for Diamond Creek. And this would be a massive moment for the 18-year-old. Just trying to get on the scoreboard for the second time today. McLaughlin will come in from just inside 50, 45 degree angle. Is that not going to come back? It's not. And scores are now level in the MC Labor Division 2 Grand Final. It's 4 one to 3 7 Almost 24 minutes gone. Bruce still in a bit of discomfort out there, but okay to go. He is. is a quick kick out of defence for South Rang. Finds Kalpakis. A long kick out of defensive 50. A big fly at the back. Can't bring it to ground. Now South Rang looking to move the ball forward. Brown's in there, gets a handball towards Potter, but Barnes sharks it and tries oh. to take on Potter with the tackle. Eventually comes back to Brown. Now to Hewson. Snap forward, and Mark is taken by Kobe Davies. So the Lions just looking to get inside their forward half, which they do now. Jolly's the target, Tintin Asante at ground level. He's got a defender to contend with. Jolly just paddles it forward. Dintina Sante in there once again. He gets a handball out, but it's intercepted. And now Diamond Creek looking to relieve. Barnes gets it. He's tackled by Hall on the paint of 50. And it will be wrapped up. 
once again. So scores level, 25 minutes gone, second quarter. A goal either way going into the half time would swing momentum heavily. As the tap comes down, Trainer's there. He's brought to ground but held without it. And he will get a free kick on that outer side and will send South Morang back inside forward 50. So not much movement. Jolly tries to make a lead. He's going to be ignored. It's going to set high. Coming in as well. It was a couple of lines. Out the back is Houston. Empey's there. Empey stole the ball back, but didn't have anywhere to handball it to. Could cause another stoppage instead, but it's time we are inside 50 for South Morang. Scores level late in this second term. As the rucks go at it, it's Jolly that gets the tap. Clever tap as well for Van Zween, and Davies tries to go off the ground. It's ricocheted. Still a chance for Houston. He was looking for the Providence with the handball. Didn't quite get to him. Diamond Creek win their way out. It's Brennan who gets plenty of distance on that footy, but coming in is Deacon Kalpakis. He was able to get the handball away. No, so umpire yeah. said it wasn't play on. Alwood was the one that intercepted the handball or, or took it off his hands, rather. I'll have a look at the replay. It was a great mark from... Deacon Kalpakis hadn't actually handballed it yet. Alwood intercepting. Umpire says 50 metre penalty. So Deacon Kalpakis is going to be marched to centre half forward. He's only kicked two senior goals. Of course, notably a defender, of course. But Deacon Kalpakis with an unlikely chance here. He's going to have to face the wind as well. He kicks from 55 metres out. It won't get there. It's going to fall short. Off hands, who's front and centre? It's all Creekers. Still a chance for Diamond Creek, and I'll be happy to see that ball go out of bounds. We're going to have a boundary throw in. 27-minute mark about to approach now in this second term. You feel like this might be the last chance for a score in this opening half. Stefan Alder did a ruck work against an undersized Robbie Noble. But Robbie Noble does well to get hands on it. Found Lewis, who just got boots a ball. Umpire says insufficient intent. Definitely the right call there, you would expect. Had nowhere to go with that one. And James Traun, who's going to have it just outside 50, he's probably not going to hit the goals here, you would think. He's going to run around the men on the mark and just send it very high to the top of the goal square. Creek is coming in from the side to spoil the ball. And getting wrapped up here is Jesse Christidis. And we'll have a ball, a ball up inside 50 for South Morang, who still find themselves with a chance here to score. It's Stefan Ole again. That's going to ruck against Noble. Stefan out of the ruck. Got boot the ball. It was smothered. Dintino Sante. Great pick up. Steps towards goal. Joshua Dintino Sante's got three in the opening half. And he restores South Morang's lead. 5 1 31. The Lions. Diamond Creek at 3 7 25. We saw he kicked five in the qualifying final, Tim. He's been just as influential today. He certainly has. And he was given way too much space there in that contest. As you watch, just able to drift away from his opponent, had Van Zwienen with the handball, but instead elected to go himself. And what a rapturous celebration in front of the Diamond Creek fans. <laughs> and he's kicked three in this first half. And every time he gets near the ball, you just expect something to happen. He's that kind of player. He's electrifying and he's finding a way to get goals again in this match. Stefano gets tapped down for South Morang. Barnes in there doing the hard work for Diamond Creek. His kick smothered. It does move its way forward for the Creek as Potter takes possession and goes around on the left boot towards Jolly. First hands do it but can't bring it to ground. Barnes is there once again. Gets a handball out but South Morang just paddling this one forward at every opportunity and it will be wrapped up on the corner of the centre square towards the city end. If South Moraine get another one before half time, that would really hurt Diamond Creek. But McLaughlin coming out of this stoppage well gets a handball over to Brennan, who just snaps a long one forward for the Creekers. It's mopped up by Deacon Kalpakis, and he's going to go short where he finds Kane Hall on the lead. So on centre wing, Hall has it. So he's going to go long once again. Stefan Isles in there. He's going to fly for the mark, can't bring it to ground, goes in for the second effort, can't quite get a clean possession, and Bailey Brown's in there, and he'll be wrapped up on the outer side here at Preston City Oval. About to sink into the 30-minute mark now. 
of the second term. Having a few stoppages of play, as we know. Wouldn't think there's long to go. Stefano got a great tap over to Leonardis. Couldn't quite, although eventually did get a handball away. Marshall rebounding for the Creekers. Bouncing ball, tough for Alwood to control. Right there with him is Ben Musket. We're going to have a boundary throw in. So I think regardless, the Lions... Looks likely they're going to take a lead into half time, which is going to be incredibly beneficial, you would think. They've kicked against the wind in this turn, but they've still managed to find three goals. And Stefano gets the tap. Leonardis on all fours. In there as well is Barnes. Spills away. Marshall gets quick boot to ball, but it's cut off by Potter. And that's your half time siren in the MC Labor Division 2 Grand Final. And it's South Morang with the advantage heading into the main break. They lead 5-1-31. The Diamond Creek, who are 3-7-25.